Hey everyone, welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. Today we have Marley Bird with us for another exciting class. Today we're going to be crocheting these lovely Valentine heart coasters. My name is Renee L from Yarn Inspirations, and I'll be helping with any questions you might have during today's class. So feel free to pop them in the chat and we'll make sure that either Marley answers them or I can send you some links. While we're getting started, uh, where's everyone joining us from? Please feel free to share that in the chat. Back to you, Marley. All right. Hey, everybody. Um, this class couldn't have come at a more perfect time as I just got a new um, like coffee table in my in my living room and my kids keep putting their wet drinks on there. How many of you, how many of you have kids or husbands or wives or friends that do the same thing? I have been telling my children, I'm like, I'm going to make some coasters and you better use them. So this is going to be super helpful here. Um, the ease of these coasters is pretty great as far as care because we're going to use Red Heart Super Saver. I know everybody knows Super Saver. This is, um, I don't know, it's a staple in my stash. It's probably a staple in yours. And then most of us have a size H or a five millimeter crochet hook. And that's what we're gonna use to make this coaster. Um, you're also gonna wanna grab a couple stitch markers. So if you don't have a couple of locking stitch markers, I don't know if you can see those really well, but make sure you grab a couple of locking stitch markers. Uh, we're gonna use those for the pattern also. This pattern is a relatively easy pattern if you understand how to crochet. So if you understand the basics of crochet and you've at least held a hook and worked with some yarn a little bit, we're gonna walk through everything we need to do to create at least a full coaster today in class. So don't forget that this class is getting recorded. So if I tend to go over something and maybe I, I've passed over where you are, you can always watch the replay and catch all the information again. So we are not gonna leave you hanging at all. You're definitely gonna be able to finish this coaster by the end. All right, I love seeing the familiar faces, Nate. All right, if you guys are all ready to go, um, the pattern has been listed in the chat. If you're watching on the replay, I'm pretty sure it's listed on um, michaels.com or in the description box on YouTube, uh, one of the two places, but we're gonna go down to the hands and get started. Okay, let me pull up my pattern. I'm gonna make sure I'm looking at the pattern along with you guys. If I tend to get off track, you guys let me know, okay? Because doing two things at once is a little tricky. We're going to start with our slip knot, right? So go ahead and put the tail of your yarn. Let me, I gotta tap all these things on my phone. Tail of your yarn in the palm of your hand. Take your working yarn, wrap it around your forefinger and your middle finger. And when you come back up, cross over. Rotate your hand, go underneath that front loop, grab that back loop and pull it off. You have yourself a slip knot. You put that directly onto your needle. Pretty easy, right? Needle, hook, same thing. Once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to chain two. So we start off with a chain two. Then it says we're gonna single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the second chain from hook and then place a marker into that chain two space. So not the first loop from hook, but in the second loop from hook, we're gonna go right into that second chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. So that's one single crochet, chain two, and then do another single crochet into that same stitch. Can you guys see that? What we've done here is we've started the miter. So we're gonna take this marker and you wanna mark that chain two space that you've created between the single and the other single, that chain two right there. Everybody see that okay? Yeah? All right, <clears throat> now it says we're supposed to chain one and turn. So be careful, just kind of turn your work just like that, all right? Turn your work just like so. So what's gonna happen is you're going to <clears throat> work into that last stitch that you made and we're going to single crochet into that stitch. And then we're gonna do a single crochet, chain two, single crochet, and I mark two space. I'm gonna do a single crochet into the whole space. I'm going into that whole space. Chain two, and then single crochet. I'm gonna move this marker up 
and put it into the new chain two space. Okay. You guys all with me so far? Then we're going to single crochet in the next stitch. So at the end of this row, we have four single crochets and one chain two space. How are we doing so far? You guys want me to redo that part? Renee, you're gonna have to help me out here. I can't see the comments. You bet. So a few people have asked if we can repeat step first one. Do we, is that? I can go back and do just the first one real quick. I'll just, I'll come back here. Amazing. And I'll just start right here. Not a problem. We have, we have, we're good. We're good on time. Okay. First step. Oh, goodness. Going to take the tail of your yarn, put it in the palm of your hand. Take your working yarn, wrap it around your forefinger and your middle finger. When you come back up, cross over. Rotate your hand over. Go underneath that first loop. Go to the back loop, take it off. And you have a slip knot. Okay. Now we're going to chain two stitches and these two chains are going to be the start of our coaster. So we will chain one, chain two. Into that second chain right there, we want to place a single crochet. So I'm doing a single crochet. Then I'm going to chain two and it's Around this chain two, I'm gonna put my marker so I can go ahead and mark it there if I want to right now. I just place my marker right around that chain two. And then I'm gonna put a single crochet into that same space that I put the first one. Okay, so I've essentially started this little section right here. Then row two, I chain one and I turn. Working into this first single crochet, first single crochet, I will single crochet into that. Then in my chain two space, so in that big space there, I'll do a single crochet, chain two, and then a single crochet. So it's essentially exactly what I just started with. I'm going to move my marker up because I'm going to keep that marker moving up through that chain two space. If I can get my marker out of here. I'm going to put it into that chain two space that I just created. And then I will single crochet at the edge. All right, you with me so far? Now, rows three through 10 are all done the same way. So we will chain one, turn our work. We will single crochet in each stitch to the marked chain two space. So in each of the single crochets, you will do one single crochet. And when you get to the marked space, you will do a single, chain two, and then another single. Move your marker up. You have to move your marker up because if you're always working to the next marked space, you always want to make sure you're always marking your chain two space. And then I have two single crochets over here. So I do one and I do two. You guys see that? Chain one, turn. So this would be row four. So I'll single crochet into each of the single crochets until I get to that marker. There's my marker. It's my chain two space. So I'll do a single chain two and a single. And I have a single into each of these. Which 
in one turn. And I repeat all of that. I'm gonna do this. I wanna show you guys something here. There's my chain two space. I didn't put my marker there, but you guys, you'll be able to identify your chain two space. Like as you start going, you'll be like, oh, I know exactly where that is. And we're just doing single crochets. So if you could do a single crochet in a chain, you can do these stitches. You can see how they're starting to really come into fruition. And I wanna show you something here. I'm gonna pull over a, a chart, not a chart, a graph, I'm gonna show you. Let me grab a marker really quickly. Um, Marley, while you're getting that set up, Nikki, yes. I see your hand is up. Could you type your question to the chat and then we can answer it for you? All right, so we started off with two chains, right? So we have two chains here. And then we put a single crochet, chain two, and a single crochet. And all of that went into that, that chain there, right? Then we chained one and we did a single crochet into that single crochet. And then into this chain two space, we did a single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Then we did a single crochet into that one. Then we chained one. And then this is where the pattern says to single crochet in each of the singles, and then put your single crochet, chain two, single crochet into this chain two space, right? So right here, you can see here quickly, there was a single there, there was a single there, right? So that's on that one, that's on that one. Into this chain two space, we have a single, chain two, and a single. Then we have to come back this direction. So we have a single and a single. And we keep doing that. And you can see here now on this next row, we have three singles to work into. So on each row, you always have one more single on each side of your chain two space to work into as you keep getting the, the pattern. You see what I mean? Like here's four, and then this will be all into the chain two space. And then here's four again. Does this make sense for everybody? So we're creating a square. Obviously my, my little chart making skills here is not exactly um, perfect, but hopefully this will help you kind of understand what you're doing. You're just putting single crochets on top of single crochets. And by putting these two um, stitches, the, the chain and the, the two single crochets into that center every time, this is where this is where our increases. 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 This is our increase. And then this was our start. But you can see here, each one of these increases become that single crochet on the next row that you're working into. So in the instructions, when it says you're gonna go until you have 20 single crochet and one chain two space, you're gonna go until you have 10 on this side, a chain two and 10 on this side, right? That'll get you through row 10. Does that make sense? Um, I mean, this is, this is basic crochet stitch diagram reading but hopefully this might help you understand how this construction is happening. And the great thing is that we are just doing single crochets. So the beauty is we aren't doing any special stitches at all. We're just chaining one, turning our work. And then I'm gonna work into all my single crochets up to my chain two space, which I can use my marker if I want. At this point, I know where it is. I can see it really easy. So I'm not gonna put my marker there, but you can. It, nothing says you don't have, you um, can't do that. There's my chain two space. So single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So there's my increase, right? So now I have to do singles all the way down. And I'm doing my singles through both legs, right? I'm going through the top of the single crochet. 
just like you normally would. I'm not going through the back loop or the front loop. I'm going through, I'm, I wanna say going through both loops or both legs or under the V. There's so many different ways to say the same thing. But you can see this right here. I mean, this is exactly what we were doing. These are all of our single crochets stacking up on each other. Here are all of our increases stacking up. Here are our single crochets stacking up. You guys with me here? Okay. Chain one, turn, and keep going. Now I'm gonna just keep going here. I'm just doing single crochets, but I wanna make sure I get to the correct size so that we can move on to the next step. Because once we do this mitered square and get it to the correct size, we can move on to where we actually are creating the, the hump part of the heart. How are we doing, Renee? We're doing good. I think um, I think folks are having a little trouble following, but I do want to remind everyone, you will be able to find recordings of this later. Um, if you're having a little trouble following along, you can always review it another time and be able to pause, rewind, do whatever you need. You know, and the thing is, I mean, we're, like I said, we're, we're just doing single crochets. But the, the, the way of just increasing right here is um, considered a miter. If you've ever done a granny square before, you guys, it's essentially like we're just taking a corner of the granny square. Like if this was the center of your granny square, you know, on your granny square, you increase on the corner here, the corner here, the corner here, and the corner here. We're just taking one corner and we're just increasing out. We're keeping everything else straight. Does that make sense? So don't get lost in the construction of it because it, it's it's stuff that you've done before. Did I ever get to do a chain two there in the last round? I did. So I'm talking. So just rip back. Do my chain. Let's see here. I did. I did a chain one. There's a chain two. There we go. I do have to get to the right stitch count. I know that I'm single crocheting pretty fast right here, but I'm assuming you all know how to single crochet. So I am just gonna keep going along. Oh, Gail said it does remind her of granny squares also. Yep, it's very yeah. similar. You're just very not similar. doing, yeah, you're not doing like, I call the three double crochets in a granny square, I call it, the a three double crochet set <laughs> and so like it's a granny set is what I call it um, but you're not doing those you're just doing just basic single crochets but we're just increasing at the corner mm -hmm. and then working all of our stitches down to the edge it's all connected so Gail is asking so we really work just two sides of this turning and then increase in three corners is that just in one corner you're just increasing at that one that one corner right there in the center where you have the chain two that's where you're increasing i mean that's where your active increase is but then as you turn and you work each row you will have that single crochet from the previous rows increase to work into as you're working up to the, the two chains Hmm. Does that make sense? Also going to ask, does the corner count as one of the 10 single crochets? Um, I'm going to assume yes. What I will do is let's, let's, let me get 10 here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep continue drawing on that diagram and then we'll count the rows and we'll, that's a great way to double check because the pattern tells us that we're supposed to do 10 rows. Um, so my, my inclination without having to count any rows is that yes, your chain two is gonna count as your total of 10 on each side so that you can get a total of 20. Um, but uh, I, I, cause if I do more than that, I'm gonna have 22, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the graph really does help for sure. I think so. Okay. 
So this is my last row. Because that gives me 10. That gives me 10 single crochets. There's my chain two. And then here would be one. So that's all in my, you know, up there, my increase. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And it doesn't tell me to finish off or anything, right? So those are my 10. Let's double check here. As I bring this in. Oh, what colors do I have? Yep, okay. Um, so I think we finished off here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna run out of room. And then so if we keep going, so if this was this here, that was our starting row. So that was row one. This here, that was our row two. And then we came, and then this was three, four, five, six, seven, right? So seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seventh row gives me seven stitches, and that includes the single crochet that is in my increase right here, right? Because I have one, two, three, four, five, six single crochet into single crochet. My seventh one is the single crochet that is part of this set that I'm putting into my chain two. So knowing that, knowing that the pattern is written for you to get to row 10, you will have 10 single crochets, including your increase there. Does that make sense? Without going through the entire chart? Hopefully that does. So 10 rows will give you the 10 single crochets on either side of your chain two, All right? This is where we are. Any questions so far? Because we're getting ready to move on to what would be called the first hump. All right, great. So okay. everyone is loving the graph, so that's good. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, so um, row 10, so I'm at the end of row 10, which would be considered a wrong side. And the only reason I know that is because row one was a right side. So an odd row would be the right side. So I'm gonna turn my work so I'm on the right side. Actually, I'm not gonna turn it yet. It looks like row one for the first hump puts me on the right side. So I'll chain one and then turn. So this puts me on the right side. If you get lost at all, you can always take your marker and put it just into your fabric to designate that that's the right side, okay? I'm gonna read the instructions, we're gonna to work together. So single crochet in the next three stitches. So I'm gonna single crochet in the next three stitches. So there's one, two, three. Skip two stitches. So there's one, two, five double crochet in the next stitch. So here's the next stitch. We're gonna do five double crochet all into that stitch. So I'm gonna yarn over my hook go into that stitch, yarn over my hook, pull up a loop, yarn over my hook, draw through two, yarn over my hook, draw through two. So that's one double crochet, we have to do five. So I yarn over my hook, go into that same stitch, insert my hook, yarn over my hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, Yarn over, draw through two. I'm gonna do these next ones a little bit quicker. We wanna put five of them all in that same stitch. This is gonna create that hump, creating different height stitches with crochet. That's the beauty of crochet, you can create some great height. Once you get five, if you get a little bit lost, what I like to do is I count the post of the stitches. So I count five stitches there and I'm, I, I know I'm where I'm supposed to be. Then it says I'm supposed to skip two stitches. So skip one, skip two, and then I'm gonna single crochet in the next two. So this is the next one and I'll single crochet there and I'll single crochet there. Then it says single crochet in the chain two space. So this is my chain, chain blah, blah, my chain two space. And it just tells me to single crochet there, okay? Now notice, I'm not gonna continue on down this side. 
it says that at this point, I'm gonna, it, because the instructions stop, right? So if you don't know that already, the instructions stop. So the first hump is just going to deal with this side of the heart. The second hump deals with that side of the heart. So when I get to the chain two space and do that single crochet, I, that essentially stops, that's the end of my row for the first hump. So for the second hump, it automatically tells me to turn, tells me to skip three stitches. So skip one, skip two, skip three. Then it tells me to do two double crochet in the next two stitches. Two double crochet in the next two stitches. So I'm gonna yarn over my hook. And the way I read that is that I'm supposed to put two double crochet into each of the next two stitches. Um, so let's do that first to see if that's the case. So that would be two double crochets into one. And let's do two double crochets in the next. That's the way I read that. So I always just test it out. And then if it doesn't look right, I change it up. But to me, that's, that's starting to like create our curvature there, right? Now it says to put three double crochets in each of the next, in next two, in neck, blah, blah, blah. three double crochets in next stitch. So the next stitch here, which would have been the third stitch of my original five double crochets, I'm gonna do three double crochets all into that stitch. So there's one. Two. Three. See, I'm starting to get a curve of the heart. In the next stitch over, I will do two double crochets and I'll do that again in the following stitch also. So that was one, here's the next one. It says to skip two stitches and then slip stitch into the next stitch. So in this one over here, I'm gonna insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull that loop through. Now I'm gonna fasten off. So I will yarn over, essentially just do a chain, cut my yarn, pull my tail. You can see that's the heart. You guys see how that, that takes shape right there? Okay. Second hump with right side facing. Boy, it's nice when you have the right side marked, right? So with right side facing, join with the single crochet in the marked chain two space. So our marked chain two space is actually, it's up here. I don't have it marked right now because I took my marker out, remember? That's my, my marked chain two space. So I'm gonna join with a single crochet up there into that space. Now, how do you join with a single crochet? Easy guys. Go ahead and put that slip knot on your hook one more time. So tail the yarn in the palm of your hand, working yarn around your forefinger, middle finger. When you come back up, cross over, back loop underneath the front loop, pull it off. So you have the slip knot on your hook, pick up your work, insert your hook into that chain two space, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two, okay? So we joined with a single crochet into our marked chain two space. It's the chain two at the top of our miter. Now it says single crochet in the next two stitches. So working along this edge, I will single crochet in the next two stitches. There's one and two. Skip next two stitches. Skip one, skip two. Here's the next one. I'm gonna do five double crochets. Notice I'm essentially doing exactly what I did on the other side, guys. So I'm putting five double crochets all into this spot right here. One, two, three, four, five. Skip two. single crochet in the next three. We're gonna come back this way and essentially we're gonna create this big curve once again. So I turn my work, 
and we will repeat row two from the first hop. So I will skip one, two, three. Essentially, you're coming over here to the first double crochet that you can get to. You're gonna do two double crochets into that one. You will do two double crochets into the next one. You will do three into the following one. Two into the next one. And two into the next one. Skip two, slip stitch into the last one, and fasten off. Oh, it says do not fasten off. So I do not fasten off. So I'm going to undo that. I almost cut it. Do not fasten off though. Look what we got so far. Look how cute that is. Super cute. Yours looking that much that good so far. All right. So it says the next one we're supposed to do the edging and the edging is a reverse single crochet or, or crab stitch all the way around. Um, typically guys, before I would do any sort of edging, I would weave in my tails first because I hate doing edging and working edging over my tails. Um, I've had a bad experience with it. I don't think it looks good on your finished project. And the fact that your coasters are gonna be used so much, you wanna make sure your tails are woven in really well. So I'm just going to take a minute, grab a bent tip tapestry needle, and I'm just going to just take my tail and just get them woven in a little bit here. So they're out of the way before I do my crab stitch. I highly recommend doing this also. Listen, I know there are crochet designers out there who will tell you it's no big deal. Hide your tails in the edging, just crochet over your ends. Everything's good to go. But I will tell you from experience, you guys, crocheting over your tails is not good enough to weave in your ends, especially if it's something that's going to be used vigilantly, um, like, like a blanket or a sweater or a, a dishcloth or even a coaster like this. Those ends, as soon as your project is washed or used a good amount, they're gonna pop out. They're just not in there enough. So it's best to just take a second and weave in your tails. So that way you know that they are nice and secure because especially like if it's a blanket, there's nothing worse than putting all of that work into something. And then after the first wash, all of your ends are popping out. Like, it's just like, unsightly and it doesn't look good. And I know that's my own little soapbox. I get it. I tell everybody just weave in your ends. Don't crochet over them. It really is one of those things that like is the most, it's like annoys me the most um, about crochet is that when people crochet over their ends, um, but there's reason to it guys. It's not just because like I don't own stock in bed tip tapas needles, okay? I'm trying to help you and make you um, do work that's quality, especially a lot of you I know make stuff for, for friends and family or you make stuff to sell at craft fairs or online. You wanna make sure that your stuff looks very well made. And if your ends are popping out all over the place, then it just doesn't look as good as it could, okay? And look, it just took me a few seconds to do that and it's just easier that way, all right? So now all my ends are in and I can go to row one. So I did my slip stitch down here to join and I'm ready for row, row one of the edging. So it says to chain one and turn. It says skip the slip stitch. So I'm gonna completely skip the slip stitch and two single crochets in the next stitch. So I'm gonna do two single crochets. So there's one and two. And then I'm going to do um, a single crochet in the next two stitches. So one, and two, right? Two single crochets, the next stitch, one and two. Repeat from star to star twice. So I'm gonna do that two more times. All right, so I'm gonna do two single crochets. So there's one and two, and then one single crochet, one and two. So that was one repeat. Here's the second repeat. There's one 
and two into the same stitch. And then there's one into the next stitch and one into the following stitch. All right, so I repeated that twice. Now it says two single crochets in the next stitch. Single crochet in ends of next 11 rows. So we're, we came all the way around here, but now we have all of these rows here, right? That are, you know, it's literally we had 10 rows, right? That we did, and then this is 11. So honestly, what am I gonna do? I'm not even gonna sit here and count. I'm just gonna make sure it looks good and just go all the way down my row here and just put my hook in. And because I know I'm not increasing or doing anything special, and for me, I don't care if these all match in the sense of making sure that everything has the same number of stitches down the side, I'm just putting it, I'm putting my edge stitches here along the edge that to make it look like it looks its best instead of skipping over a stitch or anything. All right, so I went over 11 and the side, then single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the beginning chain. So that's where I am here. I'm at the beginning chain. Let me show you. Working down the side, honestly, guys, I just put my hook in along the rows and just did single crochets all the way down. I'm down here to my beginning chain. I will do single crochet. Is it a chain one or a chain two? And then do another single crochet. Turn my work 90 degrees essentially. And now I'm going to work up this way till I get to the top and then work around. So working along the edges again, I do single crochets all the way up. And I'm literally just putting my hook in the edge and just single crocheting. And if you go along and just do one in each row, have the right count. See how nice it is to have all those ends woven in? You don't have to crochet over them and have them pop out and just am not a fan of that. All right. How many do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11. Look at me. All right. So it says skip the slip stitch. Oh, nope. Okay. Turn and do 11 rows. Skip the slip stitch. Repeat from star to star three times. So I'm skipping my slip stitches right here, right? As I'm coming around here, guys, honestly, sometimes I might, I just want to make sure I'm not, where's my slip stitch? I think that's the slip stitch. It's telling me to skip. I think it's that one. So I think I start over here. If you get off down here, if for some reason you come around here and you get off, one thing you can do is knowing that you just did 11 right here, put a marker into the top of your 11th stitch. So that if you happen to get off um, working this next bit, you have a point to rip back to. And it's not that this is like super, you know, complicated or anything, right? We're just doing two singles into one and then one and two and then so on and so forth. But given that it's kind of hard to see where the slip stitch is from, from the hump number one, you can be off just a little bit, which isn't exactly the end of the world, but it's always nice to know that, hey, if I go back to that marker, I'm at a spot that I know where I can rip back to that I know that I'm right. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to that star and I'm doing it three times. So I did two singles into one stitch and then one single into the next two. One single into each of the next two. So that was one repeat. So there's one single, two singles into one stitch, one single in the next, one single in the next. That was two repeats. Two singles into one, one single into the next, one single into the next. That was three repeats two single crochets in the next stitch, chain one, skip the slips, skip the next stitch, slip stitch at the end of row one hump. So here's the next stitch. 
I'm essentially coming over here to, to close my top of my heart, right? So it says slip stitch at the end of the row one of second hump. All right, so row one of second hump was down here. Right? I'm gonna come through here. So we did all those doubles. Yep, it's down here. I'm gonna slip there and see what it looks like. Do I want it there? That looks good, right? That looks like a nice heart. So I'm gonna leave it there. And then it's at this point, we're gonna do our crab stitch all the way around to finish it off. So I'm happy with where that slip stitch is. So I'm gonna leave it. That means I can take this marker out because I don't really have to worry about it anymore. And now we're gonna do crab stitch. And crab stitch is one of those techniques um, that it's gonna feel really weird. And I'm gonna go really slow and show you the best I can. But essentially we're gonna work in reverse and do reverse single crochets all the way around our piece, okay? Does that make sense? So here we go. So the first one, we're gonna chain one and we do not turn. You're gonna skip the slip stitch you just did and we're gonna reverse single crochet into the first single crochet. Essentially, we're gonna do these reverse single crochets into each of those single crochets. So hold your work like this, essentially swing your hook back we're gonna come back. Let me see if I can grab something here. That's my slip stitch. That's my first single crochet. So I'm gonna bring my hook back and put it into that stitch, okay? So I'm gonna bring my hook back, put it into that stitch, yarn, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Now the loop I pulled up is in front of the loop that was on my hook. I'm gonna do that again. I swing it back, go into that stitch behind, yarn over, and it's not even a yarn over, it's almost like a yarn under, right? It's like a yarn under so I can grab at that yarn and pull it up. And you'll see it's pulled up in front of the loop that was on my hook. Then I yarn over and draw through two. And I do it again. Come to the next single crochet behind, put my hook in, I'm gonna grab my yarn, pull my loop up. The loop that I just pulled up is in front of the loop that was on my hook. Yarn over, draw through two. Go behind the next one, insert my hook. Grab at this, so it's not a yarn over, it's, it's a yarn under really. You're grabbing it, you're gonna pull it up just like so. And it's in front of the loop that was on your hook. Yarn over, draw through two. And you do this all the way around. Guys, I will tell you, if you can master this stitch, it is like one of the best little finishing stitches you can add to so many projects. And it just really just finishes things off. It's one of my favorite stitches to use. And you get really comfortable with it as you get going. You can see here, it's just, just becomes sort of second nature. Let's get real comfortable with it. I've even played around with this stitch some and I've done some where I've worked stitches into, into the reverse single crochet stitches to get a lot of texture on an otherwise flat fabric. It's a fun stitch. And I'm just, I'm just going around. It even says that when we get to the chain one space down in the corner, we're supposed to just do one reverse single crochet into that chain one space. So we aren't doing anything special. So even if you got a little bit off count on your rows that you were doing your single crochets on this section, you know, down here, um, it's really not gonna matter because it's not like you need a specific stitch count. And what's cool here, can you see it kind of looks like, like a corded stitch? It just kind of has that little finishing. I love it. How many of you, this is the first time you've done this stitch? How many of you have tried to do this before, but you can never get it? Like, I'm curious how you feel. And I mean, 
it's called a reverse single crochet. It's been called a crab stitch. Um, I can't think of another name you can call it. There's And there's some other instructions on YouTube of different ways to do it, but it's all essentially the same thing. Like I have a friend, my friend Tamara, she actually does it in such a way that she like twirls her hook. I don't know, I can't do it that way. So I would show you, but I, I don't know how, I just know how to do it like this. And the trick here is when you go in and you grab that yarn, when you pull that yarn up, just make sure that yarn is in front of the yarn that's on your hook. Make sure it's in front of it. Like I said, it's just a nice little finishing. Okay, Renee, is this the first time you've ever seen the reverse single crochet? Yes, certainly on my end. <laughs> but I'm interested to learn. We've got some chatter about, did you call it a crab stitch? Yes, that is what you called it. Yeah, because you're walking <laughs> backwards like a crab, you know? Honestly, that's, oh. that's, that's how it was re uh, referred to me. The first time I learned it was like, you got to do the crab stitch. And I was just like... Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean I have to do the crab stitch? And they showed it to me. And it's just, you're doing a reverse single crochet. But do you guys remember like in grade school, you'd have to crab walk and walk backwards. So I think that's why they called it the crab stitch. But yeah, I don't know. I've never like, you know, sometimes you hear names and stuff. You don't question it. You just kind of just, oh, that's what it's called. <laughs> but it helps us remember it so that's yeah good. yeah right yep the crab stitch or the reverse single crochet and i'm just question going for you, all what? um question for you what type of needle do we use to weave in the ends so i use a bent tip tapestry needle you guys can see right here um there's also plastic needles out there that you can buy but i love the bent tip tapestry needles or i also get uh, chenille needles, really sharp chenille needles and weave in my ends. Uh, with the chenille needles, that's when I usually bury my ends. Like I thread my ends through the actual fabric of um, my crochet and I like split yarn on purpose. But uh, I was using a tapestry needle. When you get to the end here, does it tell me to slip stitch? Yep. So it tells me to slip stitch in the end of row one. I'm thinking that's right there. You know what? I'm going to make it right here and let's take a look. I just want to make sure that the heart comes together. It looks like it does, right? And it looks good to me. I'm actually going to do one more over here. And then what I'm going to do, let's take a peek. I'm going to pull that up. You see that? Look how cute that is. You didn't want to make a coaster, guys. You could just do chains here and then come back and connect it. You could have yourself a Christmas ornament. <laughs> but for this, I'm going to go ahead and lock that in. Like I said, I use a bent tip tapestry needle. I know that they sell these at Michael's. I love them. And when you weave in your ends, do it to the wrong side. You guys saw how, I mean, how quick it is, how easy it is to do, and it just makes your work look that much better. When I weave in my ends for the reverse single crochet, I make sure I'm gonna get that in, in there. I'm just gonna clean it up. I just cleaned up my join there, so it looks like it's just continuous. And then back here, I don't have to do anything special. I'm just gonna go underneath those stitches, go up a little ways, and then come back. And then do one more time. And you can see, I do split my yarn to kind of make it so that it grabs at it. If I'm using a really thick yarn, I actually take apart the plies and weave in the ends so that it's not like super bulky. That's all it does. That's all you need to do. Look at that. And I will tell you the right side and wrong side both look good. They both look really awesome. That everybody that will be the new coaster that I um, will ask my kid to use and they won't. So, hey, because <laughs> you know that's going to happen. <laughs> All right. I'm curious. How'd everybody else do? 
how'd everybody else do? I see a lot of familiar faces in here. I know that um, these are really, honestly, they're just really basic stitches, the single crochet, the double crochet. Just take your time and put yourself, put the stitches where they go. You're gonna get yourself some fun, fun coasters here. Looks really good. You could even embroider this with a name or something if you wanted to. Pretty good. I love it. All right. You want to go back to my face? Awesome. Um, so that's it from for me today. Are there any specific questions you guys possibly have about this pattern? Um, obviously, there are so many different colors available to you in Red Heart Super Savers. So you could make one in every color you want. Um, those of you who know me, you know that my favorite color is rainbow. So like I could absolutely see myself making a bunch of these in the rainbow colors because uh, I just love them. I think it's great. Um, let's see here. Somebody's saying, if I want to make the heart bigger, do I knit more than 10 rows for the base? So that's kind of tricky. If you wanted to make it bigger, you could make your mitered square larger, but then you'd have to calculate how to do the humps, right? Because you wouldn't have all the stitches there. But if you are familiar with crochet and familiar with how that works, you absolutely could make yours larger and reconfigure how you do the humps on the side. Um, that's one way you could do that. Uh, Christy says hers is puckering a little bit. It could be you're just crocheting a little bit too tight or you accidentally skipped one too many rows as you were crocheting around. Um, it might take a couple of times for you to practice with it just to be comfortable with your stitches. Um, but I bet you're doing just fine. I bet you're doing just fine. Uh, let's see. Sylvia says, yes, like under plates or, um, plates cart or carpet for larger. Yeah, I totally, I get that. Put it under plates. You could have something really nice and big. Um, what she has a great, oh yeah. I do have a crab stitch or reverse single crochet video on YouTube. Absolutely. That's what Carol was saying. And, um, so that's it. Uh, I'm guessing you guys, did, was this helpful to all of you to kind of see this? Um, this is, you know, a very rudimentary stitch diagram, but essentially it's just to build up your stitches um, right from the start and you're just increasing one stitch each row. So if you're ever in doubt of how to do stitches and stuff, that's one thing you can do, grab some graph paper, grab some markers and make yourself a stitch diagram, just like that, just to help you visualize what the written instructions are telling you to do. I do that all the time, you guys. I do that all the time. Uh, Sarah is saying, thank you for this class. I'm surprised at how good mine turned out. Sarah, that's fantastic. I'm happy uh, that yours turned out so well. Um, do I have a suggestion for a backing to keep moisture from seeping on the drinks? I do not. I do not, you know, honestly, so I have a couple of crochet coasters that I use that are just made with Red Heart Super Saver. Um, I actually have one over there and I don't have any issue with things seeping through. So I don't, I don't know. Anybody else, anybody have a suggestion on what you do? Any ideas, Renee? Hmm. I don't know. I, I feel like it would absorb enough. What do you think? I mean, the acrylic doesn't absorb super well, but I wonder if there's like maybe some cork adhesive or something you could do to like spray on there and use like a Cricut or something to cut out a shape so that you could, you could like paste on if you needed to. I don't know. Like that'd be something to play around with, but honestly, like I was just going to use it as is. I think it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Um, okay, so just a reminder, everybody, the video was recorded and it will be posted over on uh, the Michael's YouTube channel, I do believe. Um, Nate has that information more than I do, so I'll have him pop in here and let you guys know. So for the, uh, the areas that you might want to see on replay, you can go watch that and, you know, hit rewind, do all the things. Make sure you tell them how wonderful I am in the comments. <laughs> but Nate, where can they find that video? Yeah, absolutely. I just posted it in the chat. So the video is going to be uploaded to the Michael store YouTube channel in about 24 hours from now. Um, and then in an additional 24 hours, so 48 hours from now, it should be listed on the michaels.com uh, past classes page, which the link is in the chat. Uh, you should be able to see the video from there as well. Awesome. That works. Uh, there's an idea in here. Somebody says to spray it with Scotch guard to repel the water. Um, but then somebody else says that that might be toxic for the drink. So I don't know. I don't know what the answer is guys, but we can keep playing around with it. Um, 
you guys are, you say you like that the, the reverse single crochet is easier than you, you thought. It absolutely is. I mean, it's just one of those things, I'm reading it on paper, you're like, do you want me to what? But then if you just kind of do it, it's like, all right, that's pretty good. All right, guys, so that's it for me. Don't forget that you can get this free pattern over at michaels.com, over at yarnspirations.com as well. If you make these coasters, please share with us on social media. If you want to tag me, I am the Marley Bird over on Instagram. But you could also do hashtag Marley Bird, hashtag Yarnspo, or hashtag Make It With Michaels. All right, Renee, I'm going to leave it off to you. Sounds great. Sorry, I didn't realize I was still on mute. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today for this live community classroom. Don't forget to share your work with hashtag Make It With Michaels and hashtag Yarnspo. Um, as we've mentioned a few times, don't forget you can find more classes on michaels.com and the recording of today's class at michaels.com slash classes. Um, so that's it for me. Thank you, everyone. Bye, guys. Have a great afternoon.